Welcome back to this channel. The moments when the reality of injustice finally sinks and can unleash incredible visions for change. For Dr. Nadine Burke Harris, such a moment arrived one tragic night when a seven-year-old named Diego was brought into her clinic. His tiny body racked with potentially fatal asthma spasms, his terrified mother revealed the unbearable stresses of poverty, violence, and loss plaguing their family. As fate demanded this boy now gasped for breath before her, Dr. Burke Harris grasped how the trauma of early adversity can ruthlessly embed itself into our very cells. She knew then that unlocking the science behind toxic stress in kids and how to heal it would be her life's calling. That pioneering pediatrician and adjunct professor at UCSF has powerfully fulfilled that promise with her seminal work, The Deepest Well. In its revelations about how adverse childhood experiences can damage developing brains and bodies, jeopardizing lifelong health, she's created a foundation to fundamentally shift our systems of medicine, education, justice and social welfare to protect society's most vulnerable. Discovery Something's just not right. Dr. Nadine Burke Harris noticed a lot of the kids she treated in a poor area of San Francisco had serious health problems, even though she gave them good medical care. She started to wonder if all the hard stuff many of them went through growing up, like violence, abuse, parents on drugs, might somehow actually be changing their bodies in ways that made them get sick more as they got older. Other doctors didn't really talk about that idea much. But Dr. Burke Harris thought she might be onto something important. She wanted to dig into the science and find out if bad childhood experiences could get under the skin and mess up health in big ways later on. Because if that was true, it could totally shake up how doctors try to help kids from rough backgrounds stay healthier as grown-ups. To go forward, go back. When she was young, Dr. Burke Harris learned from her dad and other mentors how science works best when you come at problems with lots of curiosity. Later, researching frogs, she realized stress hormones can totally mess up health if they hit at the wrong time while growing up. Seeing lots of sick kids in her clinic who'd been through bad stuff, she started to wonder if their bodies were flooded with those hormones like the frogs. Then she realized doctors already know tons about how megadoses of stress hormones impact kids, because they have whole treatment plans for the side effects. Dr. Burke Harris thought maybe understanding exactly how stress gets under the skin and changes health could help her community. So she decided to dig into the science in a whole new way. 40 pounds. Dr. Burke Harris was frustrated she couldn't really help a little boy who stopped growing after bad abuse. She had a hunch lots of health issues she saw were connected to kids' heart experiences. Then a co-worker showed her a big study where doctors learned obese women often were sexually abused as kids. Many started overeating after attacks to feel safer. Digging deeper, the docs were shocked by how much disease in adults traced back to lousy childhoods. Dr. Burke Harris was pumped to finally have proof trauma changes health. Now she just had to figure out exactly how it works biologically so she could help her patients and their community get well. Diagnosis The Drive-By and the Bear When kids go through lots of hard stuff like abuse or family problems, it can mess up their stress system and hurt their health. Their brains and bodies get stuck in high stress mode, even when life gets better. Dr. Harris shares how childhood stress affects her patient Diego inside and out. She wants to help fix the root cause making him sick. Overall this is an insightful look at how adversity and trauma affect children on a biological level. By understanding these scientific mechanisms behind toxic stress, Dr. Harris sets the stage to help treat the root causes making children like Diego ill. Her writing style takes complex biology and makes it relatable through stories of her patients' lives. I'm looking forward to seeing her suggestions later in the book for mitigating the impacts of toxic stress. Dynamic Disruption When kids go through lots of hard stuff, it can throw their stress response out of whack. This affects how their brains work, hormones run, and immune systems function. It makes them struggle in school and get sick more as they grow up. Dr. Harris shows how patient Trinity's hyperthyroid disease links back to her difficult childhood. Understanding the biology helps treat kids like Trinity. 
Lick your pups. Dr. Harris explores how science shows that difficult childhood experiences can get under kids' skin and literally change their DNA in ways that cause health issues later on. She tries to get the top dogs at hospitals to take this seriously and screen all patients, but they're like, cool story, but what are you going to do about it? So Dr. Harris rolls up her sleeves and decides if she wants this public health crisis solved, she'll have to lead the charge herself. Her book teaches how bad childhoods can shape biology and how good interventions can reshape futures. The ACE Antidote After a rough day, Dr. Harris finds inspiration in a woman named Marjorie who says learning about ACEs finally helped her understand her health issues. This fuels Dr. Harris to keep trying to spread the word, using tools like therapy and meditation at her clinic to help kids and parents heal from difficult childhoods. She sees it helps, but doesn't have hard data to prove it yet, so she decides to just keep working with patients rather than stop to write stuff up right now. Basically, Dr. Harris lets people re-energize her calling, and keeps innovating as best she can to address the impacts of trauma. Stop the Massacre Pediatrician Nadine Burke Harris shares her eye-opening journey of connecting the dots between childhood trauma and long-term health struggles. Despite challenges, she persists in spreading awareness and expanding clinical support so more families can break destructive cycles. Her story underscores how communities rallying around kids' well-being can drive change, with caring action and vision, trauma does not have to define one's future. Overall an inspirational read on both the science and humanity behind adversity. Sexiest Man Alive Dr. Harris spotlights how pioneer Dr. Robert Guthrie created the first universal newborn screening test, allowing doctors to catch and treat the rare disease PKU early enough to prevent severe disability. She argues that we now have the science and tools to apply the same principle of early detection and treatment to childhood trauma. Despite pushback, she persists in refining quick adversity screening tools to help pediatricians identify at-risk kids nationwide. Her story makes a compelling case that just as PKU screening transformed outcomes, universal screening for trauma in doctors' offices would capture vulnerable children early enough to redirect their health trajectories. Maximum Strength Buffering A successful mom realizes years too late that her husband's verbal abuse created toxic stress causing her young son's worrying behavior. Over dinner, her accomplished friends open up about their own hidden traumatic childhoods. This sparks an urgent lightbulb moment that toxic stress happens everywhere, not just in poor families, but goes unseen in privileged ones. If pediatricians screened all kids for adverse experiences, not just disadvantaged ones, they could catch issues no matter the family. Framing this as just a poverty problem hinders healing. Toxic stress is about human biology, with understanding and support we can help all types of families. Revolution The Rising Tide When a stranger glared at her mixed-race kids, a doctor saw her white husband ready to throw down, proving stress response ignores race. Still, advocates worry screening all kids for adverse childhood experiences further harms disadvantaged ones. The doctor argues ACE science shows adversity disrupts human development the same way, no matter your tribe. Framing toxic stress as a race or money issue causes division when we share a common enemy. Understanding universal impacts means collective action, not blame. If more sectors spot adversity early, we can reduce exposures and support families to lift up entire communities. Listerine this excerpt from Dr. Nadine Burke Harris's book tells the moving story of Diego, her longtime pediatric patient struggling with severe health issues stemming from childhood trauma. She argues passionately that while doctors are doing their best to help kids like Diego, our efforts don't yet match the proven power of coordinated research that has led to huge advances treating other diseases. The doctor makes a compelling case that by fully recognizing the impacts of adverse childhood experiences ACEs, on both public and personal health, we can come together across different fields to drive new solutions. Just as acceptance of germ theory long ago sparked broad innovation, toxic stress science could do the same if we apply the knowledge to both shield children from hardship and better heal those still exposed. 
In the rear view. In this final chapter, Dr. Burke Harris opens up about how her journey understanding childhood trauma has been deeply personal. She shares intimate stories of family health crises and loss, candidly admitting her own struggles with mental health and parenting. The doctor argues that while managing the effects of adverse childhood experiences isn't easy, awareness and support can help prevent further harm. She movingly calls on all people who care about kids to learn the science behind toxic stress, speak openly of it, and take actions large and small to rewrite narratives of adversity. Despite the challenges ahead, the book strikes an inspiring, hopeful note that by coming together around this issue, we can drive positive change. Conclusion The core message of The Deepest Well is both enlightening and empowering. Now that the science conclusively shows how adverse experiences embed deep in our biology to damage health, we have the power to rewrite that story. As caregivers, doctors, teachers, policymakers and fellow community members, we all must recognize childhood trauma as the public crisis it is. Then we can turn understanding into action, having open, non-judgmental conversations, advocating for kids, and addressing our own health struggles compassionately yet decisively. There is too much at stake for too many young lives not to confront this epidemic head-on, together. The time for real change is now. While this video offers a window into the profound impacts of Dr. Nadine Burke Harris's vital research and insights, there is no substitute for delving directly into the deepest well yourself. I urge you to support her groundbreaking work by purchasing the full original book or ebook. Both an intimate memoir and an urgent call to action, this work demands an attentive, unabridged read to truly appreciate its potential to heal lives. Moreover, proceeds from book sales fuel the movement to enshrine understanding of childhood trauma into policy and practice nationwide. Our tribute to this woman warrior's courage can be no less than to buy and read the work that has emerged from her earth-shaking determination to protect children. In its pages lies the power to rewrite narratives of adversity as soon as we resolutely commit to turning those words into deeds. See you in the next video, keep watching this channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, so that you don't miss out on discussing the next interesting book.